Hey, how's it going, Merge? Welcome back for another week of Merge Online. It's good to be with you. Uh, my name's Todd. I'm the pastor of student ministries here at the Bath Campus, and, and thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, remember, uh, whenever you feel comfortable, uh, remember we're meeting back in person uh, every Wednesday night, 7 to 9, at the Montrose Building uh, for Merge in person. And so feel free to join us uh, when you feel comfortable to uh, come back. But in the meantime, this is where we're going to be uh, every Wednesday online. And so uh, thanks for being here. Hey, before we jump into our, our devotional for this evening, I uh, just want to let you know uh, that I'm going to be out for the next four weeks. Um, Grace Church has graciously allowed me to uh, take what we call a sabbatical, uh, where I get to uh, just take some time off, uh, spend time with my family, uh, do a little bit of travel, and, uh, and just ultimately find time to rest and, uh, man, just... I don't know, just be able to press pause a little bit, enjoy time uh, with my family. So you won't see me for the next four weeks. Uh, Zoe, Charles, John, uh, you'll, they'll be around and will be available to you if you ever need anything. Uh, but just want to let you know I haven't fallen off the face of the earth. I will be back August 1st, and uh, yeah, and I look forward to it. All right? So today we are jumping into a conversation, uh, kind of like a one-off a conversation today. And, and I'm curious, as you think about um, this and, and what we're talking about today, uh, it's pretty fascinating how it shows up for us, all right? Um, truthfully, has there ever been a time for you where maybe you've had something like stuck in your eye, maybe it's an eyelash, maybe somebody accidentally poked you in the eye, I don't know, maybe you squeezed like shampoo in your eye, I don't know. Have you ever had that moment where something's gotten in your eye and you've had difficulties seeing? right? Blurry vision. You're like, oh man, I just cannot get my vision back um, properly. Um, it's happened to me all the time. I feel like a ton of things end up in my eyes. Uh, recently, it's been like my children's fingers, right? Uh, they're, I'm holding my daughter and she'll like poke me in the eye and then I come back with like pink eye and all that stuff. That's a different story, different day. But uh, that idea of getting things in our eyes causes us our vision to be blurry, gives us difficulties to see right? Well, think about that, all right, because we're going to be pushing into a story here in the book of Mark chapter 10 that involves an interaction between Jesus and a blind man, all right? Um, and so I just want us to get this idea of what we experience when we experience physical blindness, all right? And I was wondering if you've ever felt like sometimes we can't see what God has for you and I in our future, I think it kind of parallels when we see and experience this physical blindness, right? That blurry vision. I think it goes hand in hand with sometimes seeing what God has for us with our future. And I'll be honest, we'll run into difficult situations, whether it's at school or whether it's with our friends, with our family. Who knows? Maybe even today you've experienced something very difficult where you just can't see the outcome of what the situation is going to be. Well, I think it's important for you and I to take this approach and what would it look like for us to kind of focus in the best we can on how Jesus can come around us and help us in these moments. What if we focus in on who he is and allow us and allow him to meet us where we are? So go ahead and turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 10. And I've actually, uh, I really enjoy this story because there's actually a lot that we can pull from. If you would read it just firsthand, you'd be like, what's the big deal about this? Cool, Jesus heals a blind man. But there is so much to this story. And so Mark chapter 10, uh, we're going to start in verse 46. All right, verse 46. And so uh, have your Bibles, go ahead, follow along. This is what it says, Mark 10 verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked, told him to be quiet, and he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you, throwing his cloak aside. He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Verse 51, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see you. 
Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, I love this interaction between Bartimaeus and Jesus here, all right? You have this, ba- uh, this blind man, Jesus and his disciples are coming into Jericho, and here sits this blind man. And I think there are four things that we can really benefit from this story about Jesus healing Bartimaeus, all right? And so the first thing, I encourage you to write these down. The first thing that I want you to write down is this, that Bartimaeus, right, he cried out. Well, what does that mean for us? I think it's important for you and I to cry out to Jesus. We see this in verse 47. He said, uh, when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was, was with him or in front of him, he began to shout, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus wasn't sitting there thinking, oh man, Jesus is near. And so timidly, he was like, Jesus, help, no. He shouted, right? He was like proclaiming the thought, the idea that Jesus was near. Jesus of Nazareth, come, help, have mercy on me. And what I love is we break this down, right? If you look at verse 48, it says, Many began to rebuke Bartimaeus, right? They began to rebuke him because they're like, Man, who do you think you are? You're basically nothing, right? You're begging for help. This is the Son of God. Jesus of Nazareth, right? And here, uh, people were starting to make fun of, right? Bartimaeus for what he was doing. But it didn't stop him, right? He still cried out. He shouted all the more, verse 48 says. He shouted more and more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And so when we are in these moments of life where we feel like we can't see the outcome, We're not sure what the future holds. We're not sure what God is doing in our lives. We're not sure how we can navigate life moving forward. The first thing we need to do is literally cry out to Jesus. Cry out to him just like Bartimaeus did this day. The second thing that I want you to write down is this. You need to press in. You need to press in. As we look at how Bartimaeus and in Jesus, this interaction took place, we know that he cried out to Jesus, right? Well, what would have happened if Bartimaeus would have listened to those that were like rebuking him or making fun of him? What if that would have caused him to be timid and shy and be like, oh man, I must not be good enough to receive, you know, help from Jesus, right? It would have caused him to not potentially receive the outcome that he did. He didn't shy away. He pressed in further. Jesus stopped at him and he said this, uh, or he stopped, Jesus stopped and says, hey, call him. Call Bartimaeus to me. Have him come near. And when you and I press in, when we don't back down, Jesus stops. That's so important. He gives us his attention. And he calls us to come see him. I love that. When we cry out to Jesus, when we don't let other people or the distractions get in the way, and we press in, Jesus stops. He literally stops and he gives us his attention and he calls us to come to him. I think that's so important. And that's exactly what led Bartimaeus to Jesus that day. The third thing. And this one's fun, all right? The third thing that we need to learn is that we need to toss our cloak. We need to toss our cloak. Take a look again at verse 50. Here's what it said. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Bartimaeus, right? He threw his cloak aside. Now you might read this and you're like, oh, what's the big deal? right? Why would we even add this into the book of Mark here? Why is that an important sentence? Well, remember who Bartimaeus was. He was a blind man begging for help. He was literally at the entrance of the city of Jericho. As people were journeying in, he's sitting there like, man, help me. I need help. And this cloak would have acted as the only material piece that he owned. 
This would have been the thing that he would have laid out in the ground as people walked by and would have threw food scraps or, or maybe loose change or something to help the, you know, the blind man here. And he would use that to kind of gather all of the things that people were helping him with. The cloak would have been what was keeping him from the sun or keeping him warm at the cool night. This cloak was basically all that he had. So why is this important? Well, you and I, we need to toss our cloak just like Bartimaeus did. Because what he chose to do that day, when Jesus, when he cried out to Jesus, when he pressed in to Jesus that day, Jesus came to him. He gave his attention to him. And at that moment, he came to his feet and he basically realized he doesn't need the cloak anymore. He has everything he needs right in front of him, and that is Jesus. How often do you and I press in to Jesus while we're still clinging to our cloak? We will sit here and we will long towards Jesus. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need your help. Help me in this moment. Help me see how I can navigate this relationship. We kind of use Jesus as the go-to person, as a last resort rather than the first resort. And we'll say, Jesus, help me so that this girl likes me more. Help me pass this test. Help me in these moments. But we're holding on to the security of the things that are ours. We're not willing to let go of what we so desperately think we need instead of turning to Jesus himself. And so we have to learn what would it look like for you and I to toss our cloak like Bartimaeus did. I think it's important for us to grasp that. Now, as we wrap into the fourth one, this is where I feel like Jesus has a sense of humor, all right? As I was reading this and studying it, I'm like, all right, Jesus, I see you. I see what you're doing here, right? As you look at verse 51, Jesus asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? That question alone, I think, is actually hilarious because in this moment, Everybody around knows exactly what Bartimaeus wanted to have happen to him, right? This is a blind man who cannot see, who has nothing. And Jesus is like, well, what can I do for you, Bartimaeus? Right? What would you like me to do for you today? And his disciples were probably chuckling and probably thinking, uh, Jesus, hello, this is an obvious one, right? He, he wants to see. Well, Bartimaeus responds, I think, in the best way. Bluntly, Rabbi, I want to see. He's like, no strings attached, nothing. I'm not going to sit here and like try to sugarcoat this. I want to see. And this leads me to the fourth thing. We simply just need to say it. When we come to Jesus, when we look towards Him, and when we press in, right, when we throw off our cloak, Sometimes when we come to Jesus and we just want to be able to see clearly, we want to see the outcome moving forward, we simply just need to come to him and say it. And that's exactly what Bartimaeus did. He's like, look, Jesus, I want to see. That's it. Are you willing to help me out there? And I think that's so important. When you and I cry out to God, we simply just need to come to him with what's on our heart. Jesus, I've got a test I need to study for. I'm really struggling with this. Would you help me get through this? It's okay to go to Jesus and ask for help. He wants you to draw near to him, and it says he's going to draw near to us. But we have to remember that we need to say it and just go and take that to him. So what's that mean for you and I? Great story with Bartimaeus, and what I love is how he finishes this. Jesus looks at him and he says, go. Go. Your faith has healed you. Through all of the ridicule, through all of the rebuking, Jesus saw firsthand that Bartimaeus had faith in believing that Jesus is who he says he is. And nothing stood in the way of Bartimaeus believing that. And so Jesus looked at him and says, listen, go. You are healed because of your faith. Man, you think about those moments where we cannot see clearly. When we don't know what God's doing in our lives, we're not sure how we're going to get through these difficult situations that we face right in front of us. Wouldn't it be great to hear 
from Jesus saying, go. It's taken care of because of your faith. We're good. See, Jesus wants to meet us where we are, but he wants us to cry out to him. He wants us to continue to press in. He wants us to remove anything that might be in the way, the distractions, the cloak that we are clinging to. And lastly, he wants us to simply just say it to him. So what are you going to do with this this week? Do you have that kind of faith that Bartimaeus does? I encourage you to think about what it would look like for you to begin living your life that way. When you're really struggling, when you're really like not able to see how you're going to get through a difficult situation, are you crying out to Jesus? Are you pressing in? Or do you allow other people to kind of determine what you're going to say or do? And do you have the faith to toss the cloak and simply say, Jesus, I need you. I need you in this moment. I encourage you to ponder these questions this week and know that if there is anything that somebody on my team can do to help you process what this would look like, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can direct message us. You can uh, text us or call us at the number we'll put up here on the screen. Man, would you just reach out to us and think about what it would look like for you to have a faith that was demonstrated by Bartimaeus. I love you guys. Grateful for uh, the opportunity to be able to stay connected with you. Um, And hey, it's going to be a couple weeks, but we'll be back together here uh, in the beginning of August. Until then, you're going to see Zoe, you're going to see Charles. Uh, And when you're ready to come back out in person, don't hesitate. You'll see us at the Montrose building. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take care.